Welcome to the 2016 Greenland Climate Project. We are here in Sisamut, Greenland, and uh, we've been here for about two and a half weeks working on the boat, uh, trying to get off the dock and, uh, and get underway. Uh, we've had to take the propeller shaft out, uh, replace the cutlass bearing, that was interesting. Um, we've had to work on the engine. Um, part of my rudder popped off. Uh, water got in this winter, it froze and popped part of the rudder off. We built a funky looking cage around the propeller uh, here in Greenland. Uh, you could just take scrap metal out the trash and bend it and weld it to your boat. And uh, that's how it is in Greenland. And it's been good for the most part. We have been getting a lot done, uh, but we all are uh, ready to get underway after 14 hour days in a boat yard every single day. We're absolutely exhausted, but um, it's a beautiful place and we really do enjoy being in Sissy Mute but uh, it's, it's time to get underway. So we have four scientific objectives for the 2016 Greenland Climate Project. First off, our primary scientific objective is with NASA's Ocean Melting Greenland Program, or OMG. NASA scientists believe there is a warmer, saltier water column deep in the water, about two, 300 meters down, coming up from the Atlantic and eating the glaciers from underneath. So our job is to, first off, map the seafloor, which we'll be mapping the seafloor down to 6,000 feet, looking for deep trenches where this warmer water might be hiding. We'll also be lowering a CTD. It's a probe that does conductivity, temperature, and depth. We'll lower this probe down to 3,000 feet if necessary, and uh, this will be able to detect where this warmer water is. So basically, we're chasing this water, warmer water column. Most of that research will be happening way north, up by Kanak. And this is one of the last parts of uh, Greenland, West Greenland, that hasn't really been mapped out. So it's a really cool for us uh, to be able to sort of uh, map out one of these last regions. By looking for this warmer, saltier water column, we are helping NASA scientists better understand the health of the Greenland ice cap and its surrounding glaciers. The second scientific project we are doing is with the Smithsonian's Environmental Research Center. Uh, we are using an ocean acidification device, a CO2 sensor, that uh, can look and read the amount of CO2 in the water. So typically, when people do ocean acidification research, they are looking at the pH. And uh, the reason for this is because CO2 sensors traditionally are very, very expensive. Uh, Dr. Miller at the Smithsonian has invented a new device that's much cheaper that can read precisely the amount of CO2 in the water along with uh, water temperature, barometric pressure, and so on. We'll also be collecting alkalinity samples uh, that we can use. And between the alkalinity samples and the CO2 level, you can get a very accurate understanding of how ocean acidification is affecting a region. And basically, nobody has done this in the Arctic. This is a, a, a new sort of study, and um, it's very important that we understand ocean acidification, not just in the Caribbean or along the east or west coast of the United States, but also here in the Arctic. The third project we're doing is with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. We are deploying sensors that can detect minute changes of pressure in the water. So the idea is that every time a glacier calves off an iceberg, uh, they will make a wave. And these little pressure sensors can count the waves. So basically, they'll be able to count the amount of times that a uh, glacier calves, which typically you'd have to stand there 24 seven and actually physically count. Uh, and so this is a really cool way to better understand the rate of the, of the speed of the glaciers and therefore the health of the glaciers. 
And our fourth and final project, uh, we're working with uh, Five Gyres, C Education Association, and the University of Tokyo. And uh, we are going to be doing microplastics trawling in a small gyre in northern Baffin Bay. Uh, I believe uh, this gyre exists and uh, we want to trawl it because this might be an accumulation zone. So uh, we'll be deploying a trawl, we'll be collecting samples, we'll be uh, analyzing these back in a laboratory, uh, and they'll be looking at what kind of uh, bacteria are attached to these samples. Uh, they'll be looking at the DNA and RNA of the bacteria. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, total amount, how much plastic per square kilometer. Uh, we just want to get a better understanding of how much plastic trash is coming up from the Atlantic and accumulating in this gyre in Baffin Bay. So follow along. We'll try to get these out to you as much as possible. I don't know how often we'll be able to upload these video blogs on the website, uh, but we'll do it as much as we can. Thank you. Tu as tout à tout, mais nous gardons.